students are surrounded by negativity and not everyone has the tools to change that negativity into positivity. If this continues, then students will never reach their full potential. Have you ever felt down, depressed, confused, or wanted any negative feelings to stop? I have. This is one thing that came out of the negative feelings I had. This pattern, do I always have to eat, breathe, sleep on my feet every day, every beat? My knees are killing me, but it's the feeling you see in my heart. I start every song, I picture you as my groom, and then boom. Reality hits like a big banging gong. I want to hold on, but my grip slips into the pit of insanity. The stupidity of anxiety, my life. Sorry. Can't you see that I can't breathe, but you're enveloping me in the dreams you are planning? Standing right beside me while I'm choking on my pride, my anguish, my sinfulness. But still you are with me. I wish for your loving kiss to heal my hurt and my worthless thoughts are drowning me, suffocating me. Satan is grabbing a hold of me, dragging me to his kingdom, but in him do you feel him? I'm sinking, leaking, no meat meekness, just sickness in this empty tomb of doom. No room to praise the Almighty, no light, I can't fight it, God. I cry out, Jesus, help me. Help me. Heed my words, he says. I love you. Every doofset morning, you're scorning me for this thing called reality. Basically, everything you can't do, you blame me. For real? Seriously. I made you perfectly imperfect. Ten thousand reasons you're worth it. To see and believe are two truly, totally different meanings. Believe and you shall see. Don't see and then believe. So small and petite you are, but compared to the world, there are so many things left to do. Adventures that you yet need to pursue. Please, please, God says. Don't think of yourself less. Be blessed that I gave you this life. Live it well so I can tell you on Judgment Day that you made the cut, you sealed it shut, and you made me proud that you found so many ways to be grounded in your faith. Every face smiled upon your grave, they say. She was a saint, humble and pure. God, help me to be like her. I wrote that, there was something that drew me out of that negative place that I was in. I want you to have that something too. You've all heard the phrase, if life gives you lemons, make lemonade. How did you deal with trying to change those negative emotions into positive ones? Try to think of an activity, an active activity, like playing an instrument or singing, instead of a passive activity like listening to music. I'll give you three questions to help you come up with this activity. What activity helps you clear your head? What type of activity brings you peace? And what activity do you enjoy doing? I'll give you a few seconds to think of this activity. Okay, go. Did you think of an activity? Is it singing or dancing? Running or building something? I write poetry. I challenge you to find that activity that helps you change negativity into positivity. A good friend of mine was continually struggling with self-worth and self-image, and I was frustrated because she couldn't see how special she was. So I wrote this next poem to help deal with the frustrations that I had with my friend, to work through even what I was struggling with, and for all who might feel this way. This is called Beautiful. Unbalanced life, purple lavender sunrise, cold sweat and puppy eyes keeping problems off your mind. You sit on the roof watching the world come alive as the sun creeps up behind the trees in disguise. 
unenergized by the beautiful bobbing butterflies as you criticize the world from inside your dark, complex life. When the earth is awake and the streets are dancing, red heat is rising and the day is prioritizing, you look in the mirror before you walk out the door. Do you like what you see? Just one look more. I see that girl with sleep-deprived eyes who tries to walk with confidence in her stride. Fanatical when you want to be, you smile with childish honesty. Have a hidden curiosity that people search for unconsciously. You leave behind beauty everywhere you go with a trail of kindness in the hearts that are closed. Politeness is essential, and God is fundamental. People are influential, but you try to be your own special, unique, and, well, your own type of beauty. So when you look in that mirror, is it beauty you see? Can you stare in those deep, piercing eyes and think, I'm beautiful? Why not? Why does that feeling in the pit of your stomach overtake your thoughts, make you struggle with your confidence, push you down, which makes you feel different when really it's you who are authentic? Is that why you wake up early every morning to put on a coating, a mask, transforming into someone else behind the veil of illusion? Confusing yourself with other people's opinions, can't pick your own music or hold tight to your conventions? You're afraid of what they'll say, what they'll do if they knew who you really are, not good enough, ugly, friendless, no. You're a superstar. Why? Why does this matter? I'm telling you this because I want you to remember it. Your brilliant mind will soon blossom ideas that scatter into fields like seeds. Sun and water will be your necessities, so be firmly planted in the ground, overshadowing the weeds all around, ignoring the enemies, because you have a destiny. Jesus will be your melody before all who look in disgust and secret jealousy. He cleanses your iniquities and gives you your abilities that help you grow through this world of uncertainty and tragedy. Why would you put so much effort and worth in something like outward beauty when it's only temporary? Think of it this way. What will happen in 30, 40 years when you're older, wiser, but don't have the same appearance? Will people still love who you are? Those negative thoughts should not be part of your world. There is something different about you that they can't comprehend. That sparkle in your eye, that sheepish grin that tricks others into thinking you have a hidden light within. Make them wonder what sets your soul on fire and why the sunshine dances so perfectly on your smile. The problem these days is not finding the definition of beauty, but accepting that beautiful treasure within you altogether and absolutely. Yes, there are things we don't like, but others love it. Scrutinizing yourself isn't going to help it. You are beautiful when you dance because it's your own type of stance. When you make up the moves, it's your own type of group. Who cares what other people think? To be yourself is unique, and maybe others will follow that masterpiece that God created. Yeah, you, look, you're beautiful. I want you to know that. You may not think so, but I do, and so does God. Flawed and odd, we are God's, and he is ours. It doesn't matter what this world has come to. Society's definition of beauty could change next month due to celebrities' fashion or athletes' passion. Just don't listen to those types of voices, the ones that make negative noises. Listen to the voice, the one that brings love, laughter, and life. Be that girl who works hard and commits, who stays strong and won't quit. Be that girl who randomly calls friends, always makes amends and doesn't need a boyfriend, who isn't afraid to let her hair down and create memories with her friends around virtuous and courageous, whose laughter is contagious, generous and gorgeous, that's you. So when you walk out that door, after a second look in the mirror, be sure to smile at those flaws and ignore the fears that may tempt you to pause. Be energized by the beautiful bobbing butterflies. Confidence is not pride, so lift your head up high because you are sweet and kind, quirky, but incredible. 
all wrapped up in a package, unique and beautiful.